Life on Earth, creation itself, is the byproduct of sexual energy. It is undeniable that creation, conception, and sexual energy go hand in hand. Therefore, it is undeniable that manifestation of our desires and sexual energy go hand in hand. mean for those of us who are practicing the art of manifestation. It means that sexual focus is one of the most powerful tools for manifestation that you can possibly imagine. To understand more about this, watch my video on YouTube titled, How to Use an Orgasm to Manifest. Nothing matters more than what you're focusing on and feeling the experience of in the moment of orgasm. What you focus on, especially on a feeling-based level, is what you are trying to conceive and manifest into your reality. In the minute of orgasm, the accumulated energy that is built up is released. That powerful burst of energy is released towards what you desire to create within the subconscious intention of manifesting it into your reality. Even the most unconscious people walking the planet today instinctively feel that link between sex and creation and manifestation. Even the most unconscious people walking the planet today also feel the undeniable link between desire and sex. But this is a world where most people are unconscious, and so what does that mean? It means that most people, even though they feel the link between desire and sex, aren't aware of what their actual desires are. They feel a strong desire for something, but don't understand why they feel such a strong desire for that thing. And this is why we fail at a fundamental level to understand what exactly is behind sexual fetishes. But I'm going to tell you the secret to what's behind sexual fetishes. The secret is that behind all sexual fetishes is the desire that someone has, something they want to experience, usually an emotional state, but that they feel utterly powerless to manifest into their day-to-day -day reality. They are fixated on that desire subconsciously and thus fixated on that fetish. And yes, this even applies to very weird fetishes. For the sake of your understanding, I'm going to give you some examples. Let's start with miasophilia. This is a sexual fetish where people are attracted to the cycle of birth. Either conception, pregnancy, birth, or a combination of one, two, or all three. Most people with this fetish fixate on one part of this cycle. I was working with a woman whose fetish was centered around birth specifically. When we got down to exactly what she was fixated on during her sexual fantasizing, it was how the man in the situation completely recognized her pain and was completely unconditionally present with it, comforting her through it. When we got deep into her childhood, we found out that she was being abused badly as a child by someone outside the family, and the most painful part of the abuse was that her mother and father did not see it. Not only could they not see the abuse itself, they refused to really accept and acknowledge her pain that was a result of it. When she was unhappy and hurting, they minimized it and validated it, shamed her for it, and withdrew from her. But when she was young, she watched a program on television on birth, and when she saw the image of a husband supporting his wife through the process of labor, she felt what she had always wanted. This is a circumstance where no one will minimize your pain, validate it, shame you for it, or withdraw from you when you're in it. She was desperate for that exact reaction from her attachment figures in response to her pain. All of this was subconscious, so it took place on the somatic level, as just the sensation of looking at and feeling in her body as a result of what she's always wanted. Of course, at this point, when she developed this fetish, it wasn't a mental understanding of what she actually wanted. As a result, what is a person who's not really conscious of what they actually want going to do? They're going to think, oh my gosh, that scenario if I create that scenario, I'll be able to get what I desperately need through that scenario because it's impossible to conceive of getting that thing that they want through any other scenario. In other words, the only way to get that need satisfied was to actually give birth. 
So she thought about it every time she masturbated, and eventually it became a full-blown fetish. Unconsciously, by fixating sexually and through orgasm on that experience, she was trying to manifest it into reality desperately. Now this is the reality behind all fetishes. I want you to keep in mind that you could have one fetish, and two different people could have different reasons or emotional experiences they're trying to manifest through that one fetish. However, there are undeniable trends, undeniable similarities in terms of what experience people are trying desperately to manifest into the reality by fixating on it sexually. I will explain some common trends. Let's begin with a guy who's obsessed with blowjobs. That's his fetish. A common trend you see in men whose fetish is blowjobs, they are lacking the feeling of being the center of attention. They're lacking the sensation of being special, of having somebody adore them to such a degree that they give to them freely without wanting anything in return. They usually grew up in families where their attachment figures were absorbed in themselves and in their own drama or self-centered interests and whom they felt like an invisible accessory to. A blowjob brings them the closest they can come because of their beliefs that they can't get it any other way to creating that somatic state which they are so desperate for. Many people, especially boys, who have a foot fetish. These children were often born to mothers who were very, very busy. Oftentimes, these are boys who are not the first child in the family. Potentially, they're way further down the line. And so they're dealing with a mom who is preoccupied. Now, what do we do with little babies when we're super preoccupied as moms? If we're not keeping them in cribs, we lay them on their tummies on the floor. These babies desperately wanted the pleasure of closeness and one-on-one -on -one connection slash undivided attention from their moms. But the closest they could get to that ecstasy of one-on-one -on -one absorption was their feet. Think about a busy mom with a baby on the floor. She walks around the room. The closest that he gets to his mother is her feet, maybe chasing after her crawling or seeing her come close when she's walking by, or having her tickle them with her feet as she walks by. As a result, they believe they cannot get that in day-to-day -day life with a woman, but the closest they can get is feet. Feet becomes the symbol of that feeling experience they desperately want, of the pleasure of one-on-one -on -one absorption, intimacy, and connection. Now let's talk s and <laughs> Okay, let's pretend you have somebody who during sexual interaction, their fetish is being abused. What's the common trend there? These people show a trend towards having pasts where they have to be in control, responsible in situations where they didn't want to be or weren't ready to be, and strong even when they felt like collapsing under pressure. Most of these people had parents who would not stand for weakness. They wouldn't tolerate it. It's not acceptable. And so this person had to muscle up and just get on with it. This weakness was punished with withdrawal and validation or shaming. So what's the result? The result is an adult who is designed for pressure. Control is pressure. Responsibility is pressure. And God, do we ever want to get rid of it. By being abused during sex, they get to lose control. And with that sense of control, the weight of responsibility comes off their shoulders and is assumed by the dominant partner. They can let go completely. They can feel the relief of weakness in a way that will not leave them alone for being that way because it is what the dominant partner wants. A sexual fetish around being abused is their attempt to manifest being able to let go of pressure, responsibility, and control and still be loved by someone in that state instead of abandoned, shamed, or invalidated for it. So let's look at the flip side of the coin, shall we? Let's look at people who love to abuse during sex. That's their fetish. These people show a common trend towards having childhoods where they were put in positions of complete and utter powerlessness. That's one reason why this is such a common fetish for especially men who grew up in situations where they were chronically physically abused, usually by a father. Having been put in situations where they felt no control and their weakness was exploited, by abusing during sex, they get to feel the relief and safety of a sense of control, personal power, and sovereignty where other people's experience gets to be in their hands instead of the other way around. 
They believe they cannot experience this in daily life, and so they fixate on the sexual experience in a subconscious attempt to manifest the experience of control, personal power, sovereignty, and other people's fate being in their hands in their day-to-day -day life. Now, for the sake of really, really stretching your awareness, going into territory that for some people may be scary or uncharted, we're going to go even darker. I'm going to explain the fetish of necrophilia. Necrophilia, as some of you may know, is a sexual fetish that is centered around sex with dead bodies. Now, when it comes to necrophilia, you've got several subgroups. One of those main subgroups, these are people who kill and then have sex with bodies. But that's not the most common form of necrophiliac. And though you will see the dynamic that I'm going to talk to you about in the subgroup of people that kill and then have sex with dead bodies, let's explore the dynamic that exists in people who don't kill, who basically get jobs in positions where they have access to dead bodies, and that's when they engage in their sexual fetish. What's going on with these people? If you go into their perspective, what you find to be the common trend is that these people, most of them, are incredibly social phobic. They don't understand how to interact with people. They experience extremely poor self-esteem. And many times, this poor self-esteem has set in as a result of a severe loss. As a result, they often experienced extreme trauma around the experience of being rejected or of being pushed away, or of having someone they want not give themselves to them. By having sex with a dead body, it is impossible for them to be resisted or pushed away. In their minds, the person who is in fact dead cannot refuse, resist, reject, push them away, or refuse to give themselves to them. And many times it must be said that this rejection trauma involves the perception or the actuality that someone that they wanted has died. Thus. Some necrophiliacs actually fantasize that by having sex, they are reviving the dead body. This type of necrophiliac does not believe it is possible to have what they really want, which is to fully have the opposite of lose, someone who will not ever reject them and who will instead completely draw them close with no resistance whatsoever. For the sake of your own awareness, take a look at your sexual trends. Take an even closer look if you have a fetish, a fixation, sexually, that you can't get over. And try to look at that desire that is subconscious, that is inherent in that act of sexuality, that you have a belief telling you you can't manifest that into your day-to-day -day reality. What hidden cry is lurking underneath your fetish? The reality we don't want to accept is that no matter whether we judge a fetish as right or wrong, moral or immoral, healthy or unhealthy, underneath every single one of them is this strong desire to have an experience that a person doesn't feel like they're capable of creating in day-to-day -day life. It is only when we realize that that we can actually break through to compassion and understanding and have any hope of actually creating what it is we want to create in our life, but directly instead of indirectly. We can only call ourselves conscious and compassionate when we recognize the hidden cry that exists beneath every fetish. Have a good week.